Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg, Vienna, November 6th, 1762. I have received safely all your kind letters, and I realize fully how much I owe to your active exertions. But I know what your friendship means. You were born to render kind services to your fellow creatures and to prove that you are a really true friend. From my last letter, you will have gathered in what danger my wolf gang was and in what anxiety I was on his account. Thank God all is well again. Yesterday we rewarded our good Dr. Bernard with a concert. He invited a number of friends to his house and sent his carriage for us. On the 4th of the Festival of St. Charles, I took Wolfgang for the first time for a drive to the Karlskirch and the Josephstadt. It was a most beautiful day. Since our arrival here, we have hardly had three or four such days. Tell me, have you two had such dreadful rain in Salzburg? Here it has already begun to snow, and today we are having real April weather. My wife and I send our greetings to your wife and thank her for all she has done. My wife will soon reply to her letter, and little Wolfgang sends most dutiful thanks for the kind remembrance of his name day. He would have been happier, it is true, if he had not been obliged to spend it in bed, though he was better. Some of the nobles sent their congratulations and inquiries after his health, but that was all. We had inquiries from Count Ferdinand Herak, Count Palfi, the French ambassador, Countess Kinsky, Baron Pechman, Baron Kurtz, and Countess Parr. If he had not been at home for almost a fortnight, he would have come in for some presents. Well, well, now we must see that things begin to move again. Until this trouble started, everything was going swimmingly. If you would be so excessively kind as to go to Lofen, it is high time to do so. For usually, His Excellency Count Speyer leaves Salzburg again on November 14th, that is the day after the Paris anniversary. If a decision is not reached now through the intervention of His Excellency and the efforts of our Father Confessor, it will never be. I shall then be obliged sooner or later to alter my plan. I already have addresses in Holland and France, but I shall tell you more when we meet. Will you also be so kind and so friendly as to make emphatic representations to His Excellency, Count Speyer. I have written to him, to our Father Confessor, and furthermore to His Excellency, the Chief Steward, about permission to remain in Vienna until Advent. Perhaps if you find an opportunity, for instance, after ten o'clock, Mass in the Cathedral, you might just speak to him, though it would be even better if you could go and see him. You may also tell him quite plainly about the post of Vice Kapellmeister, for he is very partial to me. You have no idea how advantageous it would be to me if I were to obtain this post while I am still here. When I arrived in Vienna, I found myself generally regarded as the Kapellmeister of Salzburg. Indeed, when the Emperor himself wanted to take me on to hear the Infanta play the violin, he came out and called, Where is the Kapellmeister of Salzburg? Laterly, I have not added the title on purpose, for people might think it an invention. Almost every day occasions arise when I am obliged to contradict such statements. For far from me be all lies and bragging. Now you understand me. I trust to your friendship. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg, Vienna, November 10th, 1762. The enclosed poem was handed to me by Count Colato at the concert given yesterday by the Marquis von Pacchico. A certain Pufendorf wrote the lines while listening to my boy. Master Wolfgang, 
thanks you for your very kind remembrance of his name day, which he had to spend in Vienna and which gave him little pleasure. We shall bring back plenty of new concertos. Ten have already been copied. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg, Vienna, November 24th, 1762. I have received your last letter. I would have done what you and the good friends we know of advised me if I could have made up my mind immediately, and at last I have decided to do this on the next post day. The causes which threw me into a certain sad state of indecision I shall tell you about later, but will it not by then be superfluous? Well, if this too fails, then I must hit on some other plan. And now for ourselves. Thank God we are all well, but we must wait patiently until we can direct our enterprise into its old successful path. For in Vienna the nobility are afraid of pockmarks and all kinds of rash, so my boy's illness has meant a setback of about four weeks, for although since his recovery we have taken in twenty-one ducats, this is a mere trifle, seeing that we only just manage every day on one ducat, and that daily there are additional expenses. Apart from this we are in very good trim, the lady-in-waiting, Countess Teresa von Lodron, recently conferred a great honor upon us. She gave us a box at the play, which is very difficult to get, and gave my Wolfgang shoe buckles, which have little gold plates and look just like solid gold. On St. Elizabeth's Day we saw the gala table, and quite exceptional honors and kindnesses were bestowed on us there by the nobility. Suffice it to say that Her Majesty the Empress called out to me from the table and asked me whether my boy was now quite well. A description of St. Cecilia's festival I shall postpone until we meet. Indeed, we shall need to have many long talks before we have discussed everything. On St. Cecilia's Day, we lunched with the Imperial Kapellmeister, von Reuter. When we get home, I shall recite the menu to Frau Hagenauer. Yesterday, we lunched with Herr von Wachlau, and in the evening, Dr. Bernard took us to a box at the opera. And thus, God willing, one day after another passes. We have standing invitations to Herr Reuter, and Herr von Wallau, but my children's health might suffer. Moreover, carriages cost me a good deal, for we usually take two, three, and sometimes even four a day, and if we use the nobles' carriages, the tips for the coachman and the lackey amount to as much. When shall we be home again? By Christmas or the New Year? I wish you and your wife and all your family much good fortune. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg, Vienna, December 10th, 1762. On the 4th I wrote to His Grace and also to our Father Confessor, and both letters were composed in the way my best friends suggested. I added to a lengthy apology for not being able to return to Salzburg at the prescribed time. To put it shortly, I cannot get home before Christmas or the New Year. The reasons I shall have to explain to you later when we meet. When you read this letter, you will be reminded of our court sculptor, but perhaps how long ago come to the conclusion that everyone who comes to Vienna is bewitched and has to stay. So it has almost been with us, but my reasons will solve the riddle for you. It is a good thing that we are not at home just now, we are trying to avoid smallpox, and it might find its way up to us. Now, you know the reason why we do not to go home. I trust that all will turn out well. Returning from Herr von Wallow, I have this moment received your letter of the 7th. I had really decided to leave at once and to reach Salzburg by the Feast of St. Thomas, but when I saw Herr von Wallow and told him about it, 
I left the matter for him to decide, and he thereupon took the whole thing into his hands. He went so far as to assure me that his grace would certainly grant an extension of a fortnight or three weeks, in order that I may fulfill the request of the Hungarian nobility. For you must know that for the last three weeks we have been worried to death with invitations to go to Pressburg after the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, and these became the more pressing when we met the greatest nobles of Hungary at the public banquet on the Emperor's birthday. So tomorrow we are off to Pressburg, but I have not the slightest intention of staying there for more than a week. Herr von Wallau, who has taken the matter upon himself, is writing in person to our court about it. Otherwise I should have left immediately, for I really do not know whether I shall gain so very much in Pressburg. Meanwhile, give my worthy and holy father confessor my most humble greetings, and tell him that if by staying away I were to lose the favor of his grace, I should be ready on the instant to leave by mail coach for Salzburg. At the moment, there are still many things which might keep us here at least another month. For just think, Count Durazzo, who is director of music at this court, has not yet been able to arrange for us to play at his academia or public concert. If we agreed to do so, we could stay on until Lent and Easter and draw a nice sum every week. You will say that Vienna makes a fool of everyone, and indeed, when in certain respects I compare Salzburg with Vienna, I soon become bewildered. Well, if God keeps us in good health, I hope to wish you a happy new year from my carriage. Meanwhile, I wish a speedy recovery to Miss Ursula and Miss Francesca, and much patience to you and especially to your wife. I am your honest friend. Mozart. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg, Vienna, December 29, 1762. On the 20th I intended to leave Pressburg, and on the 26th to take our departure from Vienna in order to reach Salzburg on New Year's Eve, but on the 19th I had unusually bad toothache. I repeat, for me, unusually bad toothache for I had pain in the whole row of the upper front teeth, which are perfectly good and otherwise healthy. During the night my whole face swelled up, and on the following day I really looked like the trumpeting angel, so much so that Lieutenant Winkler, the court drummer's brother who called on us, did not recognize me when he entered the room, and thought he had lost his way. In this sad circumstance, I had to console myself with the thought that in any case we were held up by the extraordinarily fierce cold weather which had suddenly come, for the pontoon was removed and it was as much as they could do to get the post bags across the Danube by means of small boats, and the postillion had then to proceed with a field horse. Hence I had to wait for news that the march, which is not a wide river, was frozen. So on Christmas Eve, at half-past eight in the morning, I said good-bye to Pressburg, and traveling by a special route, reached our lodging in Vienna at half-past eight in the evening. That day our journey was not very comfortable, for though the road was frozen hard, it was indescribably bumpy and full of deep ruts and ridges. Immediately after our return to Vienna, our landlady told me that Countess Leopold Kinsky had daily inquired as to whether we had arrived. I called on her on Christmas Day, and she said she had waited most anxiously for our return and had postponed a banquet which she wanted to give for Field Marshal Duane, who would like to make our acquaintance. This banquet she therefore gave on Monday. Now I am most certainly leaving here on Friday morning, and with God's help will reach Linz on Sunday, and on the Vigil of Epiphany, January 5th, 1763. I hope to stand in your room. 
I now ask you to add the following kindness to those which you have already shown me in such numbers, and that is to wish our gracious Father Confessor in my name the healthiest and happiest new year, and to ask him to continue his kind favors towards us. I would have written to him myself if I had not really hesitated to worry him so many times over with my letters. Give my New Year greetings to Madame Robening and Fräulein Josepha. Remember me also to Herr Reifenstall, and ask him to allow me to leave my carriage at his house for a few days until I find a place where I can store it. Meanwhile, I trust that we shall all find one another in good health on January 5th. I am looking forward most ardently to telling you a host of things and to reminding you that I am ever your true friend, Mozart. My wife and children send their greetings. If you could get the room heated for a few days, it would be well. Only a little fuel is necessary in the front stove. Written on the cover, For the last few days it has been surprisingly cold here, and today it is quite extraordinarily so. Her Majesty, the Empress, has lost another princess, the Princess Joanna, aged 13, who when we were at court took my Wolfgang by the hand and led him through her rooms. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg Wasserberg, June 11th, 1763. That was a snail's journey, but it was not our fault. Two hours outside Wasserberg, a back wheel broke in pieces, and there we were stranded. Fortunately, the weather was fine and bright, and still more fortunately, there was a mill near us. The people came to our aid with a wheel, which was too small and yet too long in the hub. We had to be thankful to have even that, although it meant hewing down a small tree to bind in front of the wheel so that it could not run away. We broke up the smashed wheel in order to take away the iron with us, though we had to tie on the hoop under the carriage box to do so. These are the only chief circumstances which kept us for an hour on the open road. The remainder of the distance Sebastian and I covered with God's help so that our heavy bodies should not cause the wounded carriage any fresh casualty. Thus, while we might have reached Wasserberg at ten o'clock, we had to content ourselves with getting there at quarter past twelve. The cartwright and the smith were forthwith summoned to produce a new wheel, and it became necessary to feel the pulse of the other wheel as well. The volta unanimia of the Concilium were to the effect that this wheel, too, was in an extremely dangerous condition, and might ready collapse at any a sudden jar. I was all the more ready to believe that it would, as the carriage doctors, even Dr. Nidderall himself, had foretold this the day before our departure. We were told that the carriage would be restored to health early this morning, that is, in twenty-four hours. But the devil take it, then we hoped, to get away after lunch, in vain. The cartwright chopped and sawed, the smith singed and burnt and hammered hard. The latter would have set the patient on his legs again at once and made him walk, if the former could have handed him over more quickly. What were we to do now? We could only, most reluctantly, be patient, and we still have to do so, as I write, for the business will hardly be finished before this evening, so that we shall have to settle down here for another night. The most important side of the matter is the expense, as at least the honor of feeding the horses and the driver falls to me. Yet, by heaven, it is better to lose ten wheels than a foot or a few fingers. We are well, thank God, as we hope that both you and your whole household and all my good friends to whom I send greetings. Our hired driver would be glad if you would tell his people that he hopes to reach home next Tuesday evening, God willing, 
we look forward to being in Munich. Hence, he will probably ride home with the post horses in two days. The latest news is that in order to amuse ourselves, we went to the organ, and I explained to Wolfgang the use of the pedal, whereupon he tried it, shoved the stool away, and played standing at the organ, at the same time working the pedal and doing it all as if he had been practicing it for several months. Everyone was amazed. Indeed, this is a fresh act of God's grace, which many a one only receives after much labor. We send our greetings, and I am your most devoted Mozart.